in the part 1 and 2 we had gone through protein significance classification and structure now in this part we will discuss properties of proteins so what are properties of proteins so we are going to have a discussion of uh, physical properties and chemical properties so here comes the first one general properties of proteins which are also called as physical properties of proteins now this first one is proteins or the polymers of alpha amino acids while defining the proteins we have learned about that amino acids or the building blocks of protein so that becomes your first property of protein then coming to the taste pure proteins are generally tasteless and then coming to the order pure proteins are generally orderless they won't have any smell but when heated they turn brown and char and give off the burning feather or hair so then coming to the molecular weight obviously proteins are going to have the more molecular weight because the proteins are the polypeptides or the polymers of amino acids so the ranges may be of like this and then coming to solubility generally soluble in water salt solution dilute acids and alkali but due to their large size they form colloidals and exhibit colloidal properties so what is this colloidal properties of colloidal substances the substances when you dissolve in water if they completely get dissolved in the water we call them as so uh, one which is going to be soluble in that solvent and if they are if the uh, solute is going to be precipitated at the bottom we call it as insoluble then what is this colloidal so colloidal are the substances neither completely dissolves nor completely gets precipitated so they will disperse throughout the solvent so that type of the substances are being referred or defined as colloidal substances if the substances are going to have such property then we call them as colloidal properties and then coming to the shape all proteins are levo rotatory so as i told you uh, in the amino acids we had a l amino acid d amino acid the l indicates the levo rotatory and the d indicates the dextro rotatory there i told you coming to while i'm explaining about the functions also i told you only l amino acids or the constituents of protein so there comes here all proteins or leo rotatory and there is a wide variation in the protein shape so we have discussed about the shape also depending upon the shape or structure we have different types of proteins isn't it so fibrous protein globular proteins all those things example insulin is a globular albumin is a oval shape then fibrinogen is a elongated fibrous shape and actually proteins do not have any color but there are certain proteins called as chromoproteins which are having the color so these are the few general characters or physical uh, properties of proteins now let's move to the second type of the properties those are chemical properties so coming to the chemical properties acidic and basic properties and then you are going to have proteins in which the ratio is greater than 1 or referred as basic proteins and if the proteins ratio is less than 1 they are referred as acidic proteins then coming to the precipitation of proteins as i told you proteins can be precipitated by dehydration that means removal of water you can get the precipitate of uh, that protein or neutralization or polar groups they can be precipitated by salts of heavy metals or by alkaloid reagents so by using these things we can precipitate the proteins then denaturation so at last i will tell you about this denaturation just remember a number of agents called as physical uh, chemical or uv rays comes under the physical and chemical agents all your chemicals will make the protein non functional that condition is called as denaturation so destroy the nature and activity of protein this is called as 
protein denaturation. Don't bother, I will explain you at last about this denaturation of proteins. Then coming to the isoelectric pH value of protein, the isoelectric pH of protein. So if you recollect from the amino acids once, you can have this isoelectric pH at which physical and chemical proper proteins are going to have. They migrate in an electric field because they possess the free ionic or electrically charged groups. They have specific isoelectric pH. So as amino acids possess a specific isoelectric pH, so obviously protein is going to have the implied uh, the same property. Then they are amphoteric in nature. What do you mean by amphoteric in nature? They possess both the cationic and anionic form. So they are going to be of amphoteric. That means they can proton, donate a proton or they can take a proton. Then coming to the hydrolysis property. So hydrolysis means breaking down. If the proteins are going to be broke down, it gives rise to the proteoses. And if these proteoses go on, goes on hydrolysis, that means breaking of these proteoses on hydrolysis gives rise to the peptones. And these peptones further uh, hydrolysis gives rise to the polypeptides. And these on further hydrolysis gives rise to our single units called as amino acids. As I told you, the paragraphs, if they are going to broke down, they will give rise to the sentences. If the sentences are broke down, then we'll get the words. If the words are still broke down, we'll get the, what we'll get? We'll get alphabets. If the alphabets can be broke down, nothing we'll get. We won't have any meaningful thing. So that's how the amino acids are. Okay. So from the proteins, we'll get the amino acids. And they can also undergo hydrolysis by dilute HCl or H2SO4 or alkali. And some proteins get coagulated by heat, called heat coagulated proteins. So these are the few chemical properties which are very important uh, to remember and regarding the exam point of view. So I told you that I will explain you about this denaturation at last. So one more important topic is that, that we have to discuss about the proteins is biurate reaction. So you may heard about the name, now we will discuss about this biurate reaction. What is a biurate? Biurate compound is formed by heating urea at 180 degrees centigrade temperature. 180 degrees temperature. When biurate is heated with diluted copper sulfate in an alkaline medium, a purple color is obtained. This the basis of biurate test used for identification of proteins and peptides. So let's see in the figure, you are able to see here uh, as a negative test and this as a positive. So what we are supposed to do is, we will take a sample, we don't know some example, and we are going to add this biorate reagent. And if we are going uh, with a, uh, on heating, if we are going to get this color, then that indicates the biorate positive. That means proteins are present in that sample. If you are getting this color, that means as usual color of biuret region, then that is going to be the negative test. So here, that's how it's going to look like. So all proteins and peptides possessing at least two peptide linkages give positive biuret. Remember, uh, proteins will give the uh, positive test for the this biuret test. So they should have minimum three amino acid. One amino acid can't give the positive test for this biuret test. That's also another important point. So let's see the reaction. So this is how, this is a peptide bond with the copper ions that is present in the reagent will form a complex like this. And this uh, complex, you are going to see the com so peptide copper complex, which will is nothing but of your blue color. Okay, so that's all about the biuret reaction, which is very, very important in the identification of proteins in any given sample. And uh, generally, this is going to be uh, used, this method is being used in uh, many of the educational institutes to identify the protein in the samples. And then finally, I told you that I'll explain you about the denaturation of protein. So as I already told you, each protein has its unique shape, either it is a uh, whatever globular or fibrous, whatever shape. 
if the temperature or pH of proteins environment is changed or if it is exposed to chemicals, these interactions may be disrupted causing the protein to lose its three-dimensional structure. Why three-dimensional structure? I told you the proteins uh, in all the cells will be of three-dimensional in structure or nature. So that's why they are going to lose its three-dimensional structure and turn back into an unstructured string of amino acids. When once the amino protein is going to have this unstructured string, then it loses its high-order structure, but not its primary sequence. It is said to be denatured. And these denatured proteins are usually not functional. So this is what about the denaturation of proteins where the prote proteins becomes denatured. Okay. Or they can there won't be any functional. So that's how it is going to be of denaturation of protein. One of the property of protein, very important property of protein. So that's how we finish the properties of proteins by this part. So we have completed the total topic of proteins. Thank you.